Marcus Aurelius once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Welcome to Philosophy Q, where we delve into the profound depths of wisdom and explore the art of living well. If you seek guidance on mastering your emotions and cultivating a life of virtue, you've come to the right place. Join us on a journey through the timeless teachings of Stoicism, designed to empower you with the strength to face life's challenges with grace and resilience. Before we embark on this transformative voyage, remember to subscribe to Philosophy Q and like this video to join a community of thinkers and seekers just like you. Together, we'll unlock the secrets to a more fulfilling life. Now let's begin our exploration into the stoic secrets that can help you control your emotions and discover your inner fortitude. Stay tuned, engage with our content, and let's start the journey to a wiser, more. In the serene garden of the mind, where thoughts bloom and wither, Stoicism teaches us to cultivate only those we can nourish. Lesson 1. Understand what's in your control is the bedrock upon which the Stoic temple stands, steadfast against the winds of fortune. Imagine life as a grand stage where each of us plays a role scripted partly by fate and partly by our own design. The Stoic Sage understands that while we cannot direct the play, we can master our performance. It is not the events themselves that disturb us, but our judgments about them. Our control is limited to our own actions, our own will, and our own responses. Epictetus, the Stoic Luminary, declared, Some things are in our control and others not. In his teachings, he delineates the realm of our influence, our opinions, pursuits, desires, and aversions. These internal choices are the true dominion of the Stoic. Everything else, the external events, the actions of others, the whims of nature, resides beyond our scepter's reach. To internalize this lesson is to embrace the freedom it bestows. We become like the mighty oak, whose roots delve deep into the earth, unshaken by the storm. We focus our energy on our own thoughts and actions, cultivating virtue, wisdom, and tranquility. The external world may rage, but within the citadel of the self, there is peace. This stoic lesson is not a call to passivity, but to active engagement with what truly matters. It is a summons to invest our efforts wisely, to water the seeds of our character, and to accept the unfolding of life's grand design with equanimity. For in the end, it is not the circumstances of life that define us, but how we respond to them. So let us take up the Stoic's mantle, turning our gaze inward to the only realm where we reign supreme. Let us control our emotions, not through suppression, but through understanding, and in doing so, find the strength that has been ours all along. The pursuit of Stoic wisdom, lesson two, beckons us to a higher understanding. Reflect before reacting. This principle is not merely a call to patience, but a profound invitation to engage with our inner sage before we engage with the world. The Stoics, with their keen insight into the human condition, recognize that our initial reactions are often raw and unrefined. Like the untempered steel, they lack the strength and flexibility of thoughtful consideration. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, likened anger to a temporary madness, devoid of self-control and reason. It is in this space between stimulus and response that we find our power, the power to reshape our experience of the world. Reflection is the crucible in which we temper our reactions. It is the pause, the breath we take before we allow our first movements, those instinctual responses, to solidify into emotions. The Stoics understood that while we cannot control these first movements, we can control what comes after. Our judgment, the second stage, is where we wield our true power. By reflecting, we engage our rational mind. We ask ourselves, is this reaction justified? Is it proportionate to the cause? 
We consider the spider that startled us, and with a calm mind, we can choose to see it not as a threat, but as a fellow inhabitant of our world, deserving of compassion rather than fear. This stoic lesson is a call to mindfulness, to the deliberate practice of examining our thoughts and reactions. It is a reminder that within us lies an oasis of calm, from which we can observe the tumult of our emotions without being swept away by them. As we cultivate this practice, we become architects of our inner landscape, shaping our emotional responses with the tools of wisdom and reason. So let us reflect before we react, and in doing so, transform the very nature of our experiences. For in the mirror of reflection, we see not just ourselves, but the world as it truly is, impermanent, ever-changing, and ripe with opportunities for growth and understanding. Lesson three of Stoicism, practice dispassion, is a call to cultivate a balanced perspective, a state of equanimity where one is not disturbed by the passions. This does not entail a suppression of emotions or a retreat from the world. Rather, it is an invitation to observe life's events and our own emotional responses with a clear, composed mind. The Stoic pursuit of dispassion, or apatheia, is often misunderstood. It is not about becoming emotionless or indifferent. Instead, it is about achieving a state where our emotions do not control us. It is the optimally rational response to a world where many things are beyond our control, where events are often the result of others' wills or the forces of nature. Dispassion is the shield that guards us against being overwhelmed by the emotional storms that life can bring. It allows us to face challenges, losses, and successes with a steady heart. By practicing dispassion, we create a space between stimulus and response, giving us the freedom to choose our reactions intentionally. In the words of Seneca, no school has more goodness and gentleness, none has more love for human beings, nor more attention to the common good. This reflects the stoic belief that true strength lies in our ability to maintain our inner peace and rationality, even in the face of life's adversities. To delve deeper, consider the stoic metaphor of the archer. The archer can control his training, his focus, and his aim, but once the arrow is released, it is subject to the whims of the wind. Similarly, we can prepare ourselves, set our intentions, and act according to our principles, but we must accept that the outcome is not always ours to determine. Thus, dispassion is not a withdrawal from action, but a strategic engagement with life. It is about acting with intention, guided by wisdom and virtue, while accepting that some aspects of life are simply out of our hands. In this way, we remain anchored in the present, neither overly attached to the past nor anxious about the future. By embracing dispassion, we align ourselves with the natural order of things, finding harmony in acceptance and tranquility in understanding. It is a powerful lesson in the Stoic journey towards inner peace and resilience. Lesson four of Stoicism. Ask yourself, will this matter in five years? Is a profound exercise in gaining perspective on the transient nature of events and our emotional responses to them. It is a reminder that time is the great equalizer, rendering many of our immediate concerns insignificant in the broader context of our lives. The Stoics held a dynamic view of time, seeing it as a continuum, a flowing river in which we are all immersed. They believed that our perception of events and situations could greatly impact our emotional reactions and that by controlling our perspective, we can cultivate greater resilience and inner peace. This lesson encourages us to step back from the immediacy of our experiences and to consider them from the vantage point of the future. In the grand narrative of our lives, many chapters are written, filled with triumphs and tribulations. Yet, as we turn the pages, we find that only a few moments leave a lasting imprint. By asking ourselves whether a current worry will matter in five years, 
We are engaging in a stoic practice of time management, empowering ourselves to focus on what truly contributes to a virtuous life. Marcus Aurelius, a paragon of stoic thought, often reflected on the impermanence of life and the importance of living in accordance with nature. He understood that change is woven into the very fabric of the universe and that our resistance to it is a source of unnecessary suffering. By embracing the inevitability of change and the passage of time, we align ourselves with the natural order and find richness in every moment. This stoic lesson is not about dismissing our problems, but about gaining a clearer, more rational perspective on them. It's about recognizing that the intensity of our emotions often does not match the long-term significance of the events that trigger them. It's a call to focus our energy on actions and attitudes that will stand the test of time, cultivating virtues that endure beyond the fleeting concerns of the present. So, when faced with distress or agitation, let us pause and ask, will this matter in five years? More often than not, we'll find that the answer is no. And with this realization, we can return to the present moment with a lighter heart and a clearer mind, ready to act with wisdom and equanimity. Lesson five in the Stoic curriculum, Keep a Stoic Journal, is an invitation to engage in a dialogue with oneself, a practice of introspection and self-examination that has been a cornerstone of Stoic discipline since its inception. The act of journaling is not merely a record of events. It is a reflective process that serves as a mirror to the soul, revealing the depths of our character and the contours of our inner landscape. The Stoics, such as Marcus Aurelius with his meditations, Seneca with his letters and Epictetus with his discourses, all engaged in forms of writing that served to clarify their thoughts and solidify their philosophical practice. They used writing as a tool to examine their lives, to reflect on their actions and to reinforce their commitment to Stoic virtues. Journaling in the Stoic sense is a methodical exercise where one writes not only to document the day's events, but to analyze them through the lens of Stoic principles. It is a practice of mindfulness where one pauses to consider the nature of their responses to life's challenges, the alignment of their actions with their values, and the progress they are making on the path to virtue. By keeping a stoic journal, we create a space for self-reflection, a quiet corner where we can retreat from the noise of the world and listen to the whispers of our own wisdom. It is here, in the pages of our journal, that we can confront our fears, question our desires, and celebrate our triumphs. We can dissect our emotions, understand their origins, and decide how best to respond to them in accordance with reason. The practice of journaling also serves as a daily rehearsal of Stoic teachings. It allows us to revisit the lessons we have learned, to remind ourselves of the insights we have gained, and to prepare ourselves for the day ahead. It is a way of keeping the philosophy alive and active within us, ensuring that Stoicism is not just a theoretical framework, but a living, breathing guide to life. In essence, Keeping a stoic journal is a form of mental training, a discipline that sharpens the mind and strengthens the spirit. It is a testament to our ongoing journey towards self-mastery, a tangible expression of our commitment to living a life of purpose, guided by the principles of wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. So let us take up the pen, the chisel with which we sculpt our character and inscribe our thoughts upon the pages of time. For in the act of writing, we discover not only who we are, but who we aspire to be. Lesson 6. In the Stoic teachings, see obstacles as opportunities is a profound call to reframe our perception of the challenges we face. It is a lesson that encourages us not to be disheartened by adversity, but to embrace it as a catalyst for growth and self-improvement. The Stoics viewed obstacles not as hindrances, 
but as integral parts of life's journey, each presenting a unique chance to practice virtue and strengthen character. They believe that the way we respond to obstacles determines the quality of our lives. As the philosopher Epictetus stated, every obstacle in life presents us with an opportunity to turn inward and to invoke our own submerged inner resources. The trials we endure can and should introduce us to our strengths. This stoic principle teaches us that when faced with a challenge, we have the choice to either succumb to it or to use it as a stepping stone. The obstacle itself becomes the way forward. It is through overcoming difficulties that we develop resilience, wisdom, and courage. Musonius Rufus, another Stoic philosopher, exemplified this when he was exiled to a desolate island and turned it into a thriving center of philosophy, demonstrating that no external situation can prevent us from practicing virtue. By seeing obstacles as opportunities, we shift our focus from what we have lost to what we can gain. We begin to view every setback as a chance to learn something new, to test our limits and to emerge stronger. This perspective turns the obstacle on its head, making it a tool for our development rather than a barrier to our progress. In practice, this means approaching each challenge with a mindset of curiosity and openness. Instead of asking, why is this happening to me? We ask, what can I learn from this? Or how can this make me better? This shift in perspective transforms the nature of the obstacle itself, turning it from an enemy to be feared into a teacher to be heeded. So let us approach life's obstacles with the stoic resolve to find the opportunity within. Let us use the stones that block our path to build the foundation of a more resilient and virtuous self. For in the words of Marcus Aurelius, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Lesson seven, practice gratitude, is a call to embrace a fundamental stoic virtue that transforms our perception of the world from one of scarcity to one of abundance. It is the practice of recognizing and appreciating the value in everything, even in the smallest of blessings, which can lead to a profound sense of contentment and fulfillment. The Stoics understood that gratitude is a powerful antidote to negative emotions, such as envy, greed, and dissatisfaction. By focusing on what we have, rather than what we lack, we shift our perspective to one that sees the richness of our current situation. This shift is not about ignoring life's difficulties, but about finding the good within them, acknowledging the opportunities for learning and growth they present. Gratitude in Stoicism is also about acknowledging our interconnectedness with others and the world around us. It is a recognition that we are not alone in our journey, that we are part of a larger whole, and that many of our successes are not solely our own doing, but the result of the contributions of others. This realization fosters a sense of humility and a desire to contribute to the common good. Practicing gratitude can be as simple as keeping a gratitude journal, where daily reflections on things we are thankful for can help to rewire our brains to focus on the positive. It can also involve mental exercises, such as negative visualization, where we imagine the absence of things we take for granted, thereby heightening our appreciation for them. By cultivating gratitude, we not only enhance our own well-being, but also improve our relationships with others. Gratitude encourages us to express appreciation and to return kindness, creating a virtuous cycle that strengthens social bonds and fosters a supportive community. In essence, practicing gratitude is about embracing the stoic principle of living in accordance with nature. It is about accepting the present moment as it is, with all its imperfections and gifts, and finding joy in the simple fact of being alive. It is a practice that, when woven into the fabric of our daily lives, can transform our experience of the world and lead us to a deeper, more meaningful existence. As we draw the curtain on today's exploration of Stoic wisdom, 
We hope you've discovered valuable insights to carry forward on your journey. If our time together has sparked a flame of curiosity and reflection within you, consider subscribing to Philosophy Q for more thought-provoking content, like this video, to support our endeavor and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your engagement enriches our collective pursuit of wisdom. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, continue to seek the serenity and strength that Stoicism can bring to your life. Farewell, fellow philosophers.